Hey, um, my name's Neil and I'm so excited to speak to you just for a few minutes um, about fostering. Um, this message is entitled Love, Life and Loss, God's Heart for Fostering. I know whilst I believe that anyone um, can get something from this message, I also believe that it's the responsibility of those of us who are Christians to for all of us to understand God's heart for fostering. I believe many of us will come into contact with foster families and be able to help and encourage and support them throughout our lives. And I also believe that some of us out there are meant to foster ourselves. So I want to speak to all of you, um, whatever um, area you fall into um, just for a few minutes um, about fostering and I want to start off with um, a quick story. So it's October 2011 and it's 5am on a Saturday morning. Now before fostering I never knew that 5am on a Saturday morning existed but it does and it is 5am on a Saturday morning and my wife's phone is ringing now immediately you panic uh, when someone rings you and you're fast asleep. But we answered the phone and the voice on the other end said hello. Now my four year old and my two year old are fast asleep in the room next door. And the voice on the other end of the phone says, um, we've had a, a two year old boy who's been looked after by the police overnight for the last four hours. And we wondered if he needs a placement for the weekend. And we wondered if you would take the placement. Me and my wife rush downstairs, make a cup of coffee. And we're sat reminiscing about the journey that has taken to this point of accepting our first foster placement. We talk about the journey of making the decision of not being sure if we were good enough or if we were the right people to do it. And we talked about the journey through the process of being approved. And then the police van rocks up and two police officers get out and walk into our house. One of them is clutching this bundle of blankets. And we sit down and crouch on the floor and out from this bundle of blankets comes this incredibly scared, very confused two-year-old boy. And that was the start of our fostering journey. And it's nearly 10 years ago um, now. And we fostered um, 14 different children, changed thousands of nappies, had hundreds of sleepless nights. And it's all been um, worth it. Um, calls like the one that I've described happen multiple times every single day just in the city of Nottingham. In Nottingham alone, there are 687 children in the care system. And each and every one of them needs a loving home to go to. So as I said earlier, I want to talk about love, life and loss, God's heart for fostering. So I want to start by talking about love, because before fostering had even been thought about in the Bible, God's heart to look after children who don't have a safe place to live is really evident. And God uses the highest level of language to talk about adoption. So God speaks about adopting children and he uses it to describe our relationship with him. So in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 to 5 it says this, even before he made the world God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault. In his eyes, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. 
This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. See, the thing about having your own children, and you will know this if you're a parent, is that it's nothing like Amazon. You can't specify anything in the order. There's no delivery notes, there's no delivery date, there's no specifying the temperament of your child. Please can I have a calm, serene child? There's no specifying the hobbies and interests that your child will have. And you can't even choose if it's a boy or a girl. I mean, it's madness. And the other thing is that there, there's the returns policy is ridiculous. There's, there's no 14 day money back guarantee. There's nothing. <laughs> um, so, and just to be super clear, I don't want to return any of my children. <laughs> so we're all okay, everything's good. But what is God saying when he talks about adoption? He's talking about choosing us. He's chosen you and he's chosen me to bring us into his family. In 1 John 4, it says this, we love because God first loved us. And this is where our love can come from. And this is where our potential to take a child into our family comes from. From the fact that God first loved us and that God accepted us into his family first before. And, and that enables us to do um, what we do. So first, it's about love from God to us. Secondly, it's about life. See, God values every single life, but he puts a special emphasis on the fatherless and the orphan. Now, the fatherless and the orphan in the Bible are children without support, without a home, and without food. They were children who didn't have their basic needs met. And today, those children are children in care. Children who don't have their basic needs met. And what the Bible talks about when it speaks about those children is the responsibility of the community to step up and to fill that gap. And that is what God is talking to us as Christians about today. How do we step in and step up as a community to fill this gap? In Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, it says this, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Help the oppressed. Defend the cause of orphans. There are 98 verses in the Bible that mention the word fatherless or orphan. This isn't a fringe area of the Bible. It's an area that's vital if we want to understand God's heart and who he is. So we should act to help as a community. But we have to be careful not to confuse ourselves as the one with a as a hero with a cape because God is going to transform you just as much if not twice as much as any impact that you could ever have on a child in Luke chapter 9 verse 48 Jesus says this anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me and anyone who welcomes me also welcomes the, my Father who sent me. Whoever is the least among you is the greatest. So let's welcome Jesus into our homes. We're being transformed by the incredible privilege of meeting Jesus and connecting with him when we do this stuff. But it's not fluffy. 
It's not easy or straightforward. It's messy and it's emotional and it's stretching. So if you want to make a difference, um, then there's going to be some mass. And this mass could look like a few different things. A, number, a whole load of different mass. But here's some ideas. It could look like 2am in the morning waking up to the, a screaming baby. And not just one night or one time, but multiple nights and multiple times. It could like, look like having a teenager that you've welcomed into your home who ends up stealing from you. It could look like having an eight-year-old who you're putting boundaries in with that hits you. It could look like having to relearn how you parent because the way your parents did it or the way you did it with your birth children just doesn't work with these kids. There's this incredible verse in the Bible which I want to make famous and it's this, Proverbs 14, 4. And it says this, an empty stable stays clean, but no income comes from an empty stable. If you want a neat and tidy way to make a difference in this world, don't foster, don't even think about it. But if you're willing to deal with some mess, if you're willing to step out and do something incredibly meaningful that makes a difference in children's lives, then fostering could be the thing for you. If you're willing to work with mess and shovel some muck, then fostering could be an opportunity for you. The third thing I want to talk about is loss. The most common sentence that is said to me when people find out that I'm a foster carer is, is probably this one. It's, I couldn't do what you do because I couldn't give them back. And without a doubt, that is the hardest thing about fostering. When you've loved and looked after a child for so long and then you have to say goodbye, that isn't easy. But I think we inherently know as human beings that love is about loss. Love, loss is, is part of love. So with a new romance, um, we get to that stage where we know that it could all fall apart. We know that it's still a risk but we choose to fall in love anyway. We get that empty nest feeling, you know, when our children leave home for the first time. You get that independent young child who lets you know in no uncertain terms that they don't need you to zip up their coat anymore or put on their shoes for them. As, as one of my little girls says, I can do it, I can do it! Or it could be allowing your teen to go out to a new place for the first time and trusting them. I think ultimately we know deep down that love, real love, is tied up in the risk of loss. It doesn't make it any easier, but it is part of the deal. One of the greatest gifts that you or anyone could give um, a child is to be that strong, consistent connection in a moment of crisis and chaos in their lives. To, the, to be that person who's showing love in that time can make an incredible difference. And we know that a single, consistent, positive foster care placement can make a huge difference to that child's life both whilst they're a child and when they're an adult. There's an incredible verse in the Bible um, that speaks to us about loss and it's from 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9 and it says this, my grace is all you need, my power works best in your weakness. So what do we do with all of this that we've 
talked about today. The reality is that fostering isn't for everyone. So if you know that fostering isn't for you, then you can help us in a few really key ways. So you can pray um, for foster carers, you can pray for vulnerable children, and you can pray for the authorities that work with them. We need really good, strong, positive systems in place to help these children, and we need loving and personal foster carers to make the difference in these children's lives. You could give to any number of charities that help vulnerable children or that support foster carers. Or you could help um, a foster family with childcare. Foster families need DBS checked individuals to look after their children so that they can go and have a night out or have an afternoon off or meet some of their work commitments. So by filling in a simple form, you can support a family in that way. You could also be a family friend. Now, believe it or not, foster families don't always get invited round to tea. <laughs> and I think it's something to do with the mess that we spoke about earlier. But you could be that family friend that invites a foster family round to your house. But there's other, others of you out there who are meant to foster. And to you, I would say... Don't wait for the perfect time because the perfect time doesn't exist. Don't wait to know you 100% want to do it before you find out more about it. Don't wait to be perfect parents because there's no perfect parents. And don't wait for your life to look like another foster carer's life because there's a whole load of different foster carers out there who are loving and helping children who need support and help. See, fostering requires you to make room. It requires you to make space in your home, to make time in your life and to make room in your heart. So let's start making room. And if you want to have more information about fostering, then 100 Homes are putting on an incredible foster, fostering evening that commits you to nothing, but can open your eyes to everything. It's on the 9th of June. And if you wanna find out more information about that or about anything else to do with fostering, then look up the 100 Homes Facebook page to find out more. Thank you so much for listening. I know your time is precious and I appreciate your time. And I, I want to thank you for listening for, for this important subject. <laughs>